The court rulings supporting it are right on the bottom. She was just asking if the state had seen it. They have no objection to both these motions. There's a relief. Object. All rise. Sixth district court is now in session. Be seated. Good afternoon. <clears throat> We're here in the matter of um, State versus William. Is it Alleman? So you'll. My understanding is that you'll rule on it at trial. I'm going to dismiss the motion. Understood. You, know, you can raise the motion again. I'm not dismissing on the merits of the, the claim. I'm <coughs> saying it's untimely filed at this point. Um, hopefully the parties will be able to work out their issues with regard to discovery. But if, if, if what, it, what they're requesting, if you feel it's not appropriate to provide it, and you feel you're not required to provide it, then, then you know, I guess you'll file a motion to compel and we'll have to deal with that issue. And I will, I'm not sure why this was scheduled, actually. I, I didn't schedule it for motion hearings today and I would deal with those. I think it should be scheduled, you know, prior to the hearing in the matter. Mm -hmm. um, so at this point, that's what we'll do. If there's something else filed, we'll deal with it um, prior to hearing. Uh, um, the other motion that's before the court, I think, is probably even, uh, well, I'll let you address it, counsel. I mean, I, I've read the objection to it in your motion, but this is a motion that you've titled, um, help me with the title on it. Motion for judgment for acquittal, Your Honor. Okay. You want to address that? Uh, yes, Your Honor. There's three legal issues uh, that we brought up in this motion. Um, the first is a First Amendment issue. The fact that the um, Article 22 of the New Hampshire Constitution, First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, both protect the right of freedom of the press. Various courts have ruled on this. While this is an issue of first impression for New Hampshire courts, um, various courts and federal courts, including the First Circuit, have ruled on this. Uh, they, uh, all the, f uh, the uh, findings that I, all the cases that I've seen state that the right to record public officials in public is, in some case, and uh, Ayobachi said it was sufficiently clear. Uh, Smith v. City of Cumming uh, basically said that uh, reporters and independent <coughs> reporters, notably, not just the evening news, have the right to record their public officials. Uh, specifically, uh, Smith says people have the right to record police conduct. You know, Ford, Fordyce v. City of Seattle, a Ninth Circuit case, uh, was court held that it was protected by the First Amendment openly to record people who were not public officials, even if they didn't want to be recorded because they were in a public place and therefore had no reasonable ex um, expectation of privacy, and that it was a matter of public interest. Again, that involved an independent reporter for a public as access channel. Let me ask you a question before you continue. I know you've made a number of arguments, not only related to what you started with, but also related to the specific statute that you have in New Hampshire. That's correct, Your Honor. Uh, don't these issues go to... Um, I mean, how can I rule on these issues before I've taken any evidence in the case? Well, I believe that's what the purpose of this motions hearing is, Your Honor, as well as the fact that we have stipulated facts that um, I can hand to the court right now if I can approach. What, what do you have there? I have stipulated facts that the court of uh, the state and the defense came to this morning. 
part of your request, Your Honor. Oh, well, that was going to be my point, is we either have to have a hearing on that or we have to have some stipulated facts. That was my understanding of today's hearing. I know you were arguing there wasn't a dispute, but that's correct. Okay. All right, let me, before he gets to the rest of his arguments and your response, um, did these facts, are these all the facts the court would need to determine to, to, to make this decision? I mean, uh, uh, is there a complete stipulation on the relevant facts? I, is this, I, it's just strictly a question of how these facts apply to the statute? I believe so, Your Honor. All right. Do you agree with that, Attorney Hippel? Is I do. Is, 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 there's no, nothing that's relevant to this charge that hasn't been stipulated to factual. Now that we have stipulated facts, I believe that's true. All right, now you, you um, in your objection, Counsel, you indicated that um, you indicated that you did not believe the court could issue this uh, order prior to trial, and I, I agreed with that when, when I read your objection up to the point that we have either testimony or stipulated facts. If we have facts, um, why can't we hear the legal and argument? we could well for two there were two reasons your honor one is yes we need some kind of facts which i believe you have okay. and the other is i think we need to change the title of this motion because obviously motion for judgment of acquittal is a ruling by well he's i, I think we could call it a motion to dismiss Do you right. object okay. to that attorney Hepple, I mean, because otherwise no, it's honor. misnamed although the uh, I, I think it is misnamed but i mean it, it, the purpose is, is certainly right. valid i think what you're arguing is there's no dispute on the facts it's a question of the application of facts to the relevant law and at this point, you're asking for the court to dismiss it. Uh, That's correct, trial right. based upon those. And with those two changing it, motion to dismiss and the stipulated facts, I agree, Your Honor. I think we could hear that today. Okay. Um, well, that, I mean, now, do, do you want that heard today, Attorney Hippo, given the fact that my ruling on the motion to suppress, do you, do you want the court's prepared to do that? I'll go back and read these stipulated facts, and then we can hear, hear the argument. I don't know, may either make a decision today or take it under advisement, but. We had this issue about the um, grounds for the stop, and I think you wanted to, uh, you know, I don't think it's right to, to, to bring that particular motion now, unless that's part of the, the facts here. Is that part no. of the stipulated fact? No, it's not. No, Your Honor, of course. Do evidence on that? Do you have witnesses to do that? Evidence on? On, on the issue of the stop. Do you, do you want to pursue that? Um, so I'd, be happy, your motion I'd be happy. Point, because I didn't think we had any evidence. It's not in the stipulated facts, Your Honor, um, because I have no I have no information on it. But I'd, I'd be happy to, if the state wants to put on evidence, I'd be happy to, to go that route. But it's not a question of evidence, Your Honor. I agree with you, Your Honor, but it's a discovery issue that he's asking for. It's not whether or not the... Well, well here's my point, Counsel. There's no point in having a hearing on the underlying argument on the motion to dismiss. Right. If he's got a, an alternate theory, and the alternate theory is that any evidence that was obtained from the stop should be excluded I, based upon an invalid stop, and I guess what we need to do is I, I don't resolve think, that issue. I don't it's not going to resolve the case otherwise. I don't that's think that's his important. argument, though, Your Honor. I think his argument is that he has no idea what the basis for the stop is because he's claiming he didn't receive anything in discovery for the basis for the stop. If we did not, uh, if we didn't cover the motion to suppress today, we could still dis dis uh, dispose of the case. Any one of the three arguments that I make, two statutory, one constitutional, would both dispose of the case. The motion to suppress would not necessarily dispose of the case. It would depend on whether the court thought the attenuation of taint reached certain evidence. Well, correct, but if you're going to ask me to rule on it either one way or the other, you're not going to get a second bite at the apple based on that motion later. So you need to be on, you need to discuss that with your client and be on the record whether or not you want the court, based on the stipulated fact of your arguments on your motion to dispense and make a ruling based on that. Uh, yes, I do want to have a ruling on the motion to dispense. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. I've read the, um, Yes, we have. I read the stipulated facts. Attorney Kippel, you want to proceed with your motion, argument? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, re regarding the, um, so as far as the uh, constitutional claim, here we uh, we don't actually have a person following the police around like um, the uh, other courts said was protected in other cases. We have an independent reporter, same as other cases. And um, as many of these cases have involved, we have pu a public official in a public place performing public duties. So it's clear that the, um, the Constitution protects the right of people to document their interactions with public officials in public. And um, 
that uh, I believe is clearly protected, as Ayabuchi said. Regarding the statutory arguments, we have two. First of all, the wiretapping law is based on, and New Hampshire is based on the model penal code. So there are various states that have either identical or almost identical language to New Hampshire's. So there's a lot of case law out of state, although um, one of these issues has not been ruled on, another has. And uh, we're able to look to that for clarification. The definition of intercept in the statute requires a reasonable expectation of privacy. Some, some courts have used the CATS test for that, which of course requires a um, subjective and objective expectation of privacy. In this case, Officer Montpleasure had neither. He understood that he was being recorded or could be recorded, and he actually stated so. And object, so that's he had no subjective for expectation of privacy. And objectively, it's not reasonable. Society is not willing to accept that a police officer, public employee on public payroll, in public, performing public duties, has a reasonable expectation of privacy. Um, indeed, the Attorney General of New Hampshire has, has ruled the same uh, when there was an uh, issue with a police chief uh, secretly recording um, the work of public officials. The court said that they didn't have a reasonable expectation in how they performed their duties, even though the recording was secret. Therefore, there was no reasonable expectation of privacy. Um, an, an issue of fact is whether or not the words, uh, that's fine, we'll let it be, which Officer Montpleasure said when Mr. Alleman stated that he had the right to record, whether or not that's consent and if, uh, whether or not Mr. Alleman could reasonably have assumed it was consent. The last issue is a statutory issue that we do have case law in New Hampshire. Um, I actually have, uh, I pulled a case that I found since I uh, submitted this motion at State v. TELUS. Um, basically, the statute exempt. Yeah, Yes, Your Honor. May I approach? Have you seen it? No, I have not. Why don't you show it to counsel? I'm not taking that as an exhibit, that will be for information purposes. That's right. In uh, Glasner v. Glasner, which is a federal appeals, uh, circuit court of appeals case, as well as State v. Tellus, which I just handed to the court, they involved people uh, actually secretly, both of them were secret recordings done by a telephone. The uh, courts in both cases said that the secret recording using a telephone was not wiretapping because the statute specifically exempts telephones in the ordinary course of use from being, um, from being covered by the wiretapping law. So, for instance, in uh, State v. Tellus, we had someone pick up an extension telephone and secretly listen to a conversation that a person had in their own home, um, where you could definitely argue that someone had a reasonable expectation of privacy. But the, state, the uh, court ruled that that was not covered by the wiretapping law because it was a telephone being used as telephones and ordinarily used. In this case, as you can see with the stipulated facts, this was a telephone being used to leave a voicemail. It was held out in front of Mr. Alleman, uh, where, where, where Officer Montpleasure could see it. And um, it was a telephone being used in the ordinary course, the in the ordinary way the telephones are used. So if State v. Tellus, where a, a phone was used surreptitiously to intercept a conversation, is not wiretapping, this is definitely not wiretapping. Either. That's all I have. Thank you, um, With regards to, I'll take the last um, argument with regards to use of the telephone. Um, in the case in State you tell us, the telephone was used as it was meant to be used, Your Honor, just for listening. Um, and the defendant is correct that a telephone used in the ordinary course, and that's important, Your Honor, is not. People, it, you can't use it for intercepting. It doesn't count. And the Telus case had nothing to do with an expectation of privacy. Let me just ask a question because I haven't yes. yet read this case. Um, I don't know if you have either counsel. I'm familiar with it and I perused um, it, Your Honor. 
Thank you, Paul. We might be to the use of the telephones not being wired up. And does the court in this case, and I'll question read it afterwards, but does it make any distinction about the ordinary use as opposed to other uses? Because I will note that this is a 1995 case. In other words, the ordinary use of the telephone, I bring this up to counsel, the ordinary use of the telephone in 1995 is a lot different than it is in 2011. It does use uh, ordinary From use. Now, yes. The uses that somebody can make on the phone today are quite different than what they could be done, what could have been done back in the mid-90s. And fortunately for the court, we're not talking about some kind of uh, um, elaborate use of this telephone. It was simply making a call, leaving a voicemail. They did have answering machines in the 1990s. Um, however, Your Honor, your point, that is my point, is that this telephone... I was making a point to you. Right. The, the, the point to you is that they simply said use of the telephone, evidently. That's what he's saying. It wasn't this distinction made because the telephone well, had limited uses, but why should I put... Why, why, why should I read into that something more and say that if you're using the telephone to record the voice conversation, why, sh why should I start making distinctions about what kind of uses of the phone? Because the if statute says... you're using says a phone, you're using a phone. You just use a phone for different things than you would, many different things than you would have 15, 16 years ago. The statute says the ordinary course of its business, um, and I believe that when you are using a telephone in the ordinary course of the business, that a phone company, um, when it hands you a phone, until Porcupine 411, Your Honor, I had never heard of a situation where you could make a phone call to some, I don't even know what it is, this Porcupine 411 something, that records that phone call, sends, I guess, an email, a text, something, to a bunch of subscribers, and downloads that call. If you go to Porcupine 411, you can listen to the conversation between Officer Mount Pleasure and the defendant. That's not using the phone in the ordinary course of business, Your Honor. And that's the state's argument, anyway, is that the in terms of what the statute is designed to protect, that if you, let's leave an officer out of it. Let's, we're talking about the argument, just simply, is that phone being used in the ordinary course of business? That would mean that you could do an end run around the statute by recording a private citizen using your phone to Porcupine 401, which doesn't just send a voicemail to these people, puts them on a public website and say, I wasn't wiretapping without authorization. I was using a phone, therefore it's not wiretapping. And that would be such an end run around the intention of this statute. So I believe that when the, the legislature enacted 570A and they said ordinary course of business, like any statute, you can't anticipate changes in technology. However, today, we can look back at what the spirit of the statute was. What, was, what did the legislature intend? And the legislature, I believe, would say, yes, we intended that a telephone, when you're talking on it, in the ordinary course of business, is not. Do you have a legislative history on that? How, how can you speak for that? I said I believe you on I, I think I'm going to have to look myself in both of the sides of this argument what the statute says. Unless somebody wants to research and present to me a legislative history with what the intent behind the statute was, I don't think you're in a position to make that kind of an offer. Fair enough. Court. But I, I still believe if you read the statute, Your Honor, the statute was intended to prevent, leave the office, that's a separate argument, can't do this to an officer. But the statute was designed to prevent that kind of, that's why it's happening, taking your phone, taping somebody, sending it to a voicemail for all the world to hear and posting it on a website. That's not the ordinary use of that telephone. It isn't. I had never heard of it, and I've been talking on the phone for a long time, until Porcupine 401. That's clearly not the ordinary course of business. Um, with regards to the, ports, the letter that's attached to his motion, Your Honor, at the Portsmouth Police Department, that police department was actually posted that there was um, taping, audio and video taping involved at the police department. That was the big reason for the Attorney General's office decision in that case, that the officers were essentially put on notice that there was audio and video tape in that department. Um, which is important because that's the issue in this case, was Officer Malpleasure notified that he was going to be audio and video taped. And in that case, the officers were. Um, the do you, do you agree with the counsel's argument that that if he was aware that it was being taped, this conversation, that wasn't um, 
secretive that, that it would be not like having there. He's essentially saying, I, I understood your argument to be if you take it without permission, it doesn't matter whether somebody knew it, they didn't get permission. Trust is wiretapping, which counsel, I think, defense counsel is making the argument that it depends on whether or not a person was aware of the. I'm sorry. I'm going to finish the statement. Was aware of whether or not the tape was concerned. Do you agree with that, or do you think it's a hard and fast? No, I agree. And as a matter of fact, in the stipulated facts, it talks about how the another individual came to the scene and specifically said, sir, I'm going to be recording what you are doing. Officer Mount Pleasure responded, that's fine. That individual then held up the phone and started recording. And it's interesting that I think counsel is making, trying to make two separate arguments, because in his phone, in his stipulated facts, we have Mr. Ahman coming to the scene saying, sir, I'm going to be recording what you are doing. Officer Mount Pleasure responded, that's fine. Then Mr. Ahman then parked close by on the shoulder and opened his cell phone to begin recording. That's the stipulated fact, Your Honor. So even the defendant is admitting that they're using their cell phone to record the conversation. Before Mr. Ahman actually did make a recording, he was instructed by Officer Mount Pleasure to move his vehicle as there was no shoulder, and Mr. Ahman did so. So I do think it's a distinction, and Officer Mount Pleasure indicates that in the stipulated facts, that we don't dispute that, that if you're told, you're asked, I'm going to record you. And similarly, police officers, when they have the audio and videotapes in their cruisers, have to let people know, we are audio and videotaping. And if that individual says, I don't want you to do it, then it has to be shut off. So it works both ways. But no, I agree that if he had been put on notice and gotten consent, then we wouldn't be here today. And Mr. Ahman, nothing... All right, let's stop for a second. I understand your argument to be that the consent is required as long as the knowledge that you're being recorded exists. Am I wrong about your argument? That's one of the things that exempts one from the notification requirement, yes. One, either prong of the CATS test can exempt someone from having to get permission for a recording. Either if the person subjectively believes they're going to be recorded, or objectively, if their expectation is unreasonable. Based on the stipulated facts, is there a dispute here that the officer didn't know he was being recorded? He did not know. Okay. Yes, there is. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I mean, they had a whole conversation according to the stipulated facts about recording and, and not wanting somebody to record. And he said he had a right to record, and he said, okay. And, 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 and you're, you're, we have a dispute that the officer didn't know then that the company, forget Mr. Palmer for a second, Mr. Mr. Allman was recording him. You're saying that that's a, that's a he, he, he didn't know he was being recorded? He did not know. That would be his testimony. Well, then that's a factual dispute. Yeah. I mean, so we have to have a, a testimony in that. We have, I can't make a decision on something that's that relevant to the case without having testimony under oath. Um, well, Your Honor, my I said it from the beginning that it ends up being a, it ends up being an issue for trial for me to hear the evidence and determine then whether or not the state's proven its case. How can it be a motion to dismiss that if there's a disputed fact? Well, three things, Your Honor. First of all, as far as whether there's a disputed fact, there's no dispute that also my pleasure had no subjective belief. Counsel, there's a disputed, you got to understand something. It's a disputed fact if both parties don't agree on the fact. Whether or not you think it shouldn't be disputed is, is your right to present the case. I was not right? about to argue that it shouldn't be disputed. But I was about to argue that it's not disputed. What I'm saying is Mr. Ammon um, got permission to record. Therefore, he had no subjective expectation that he Counsel, did not. Counsel, let his... say this again. If you want to have a motion to dismiss, it has to be based upon undisputed facts and application of law to that. Whether or not you think something shouldn't be disputed, I'm going to have to take evidence on both sides of that argument, make a decision on what I think the correct facts are with two different versions of them, and then apply the facts to to the law to determine whether this case should be dismissed. I can't. You can't tell the other party that they can't dispute it. That's not justified. I'm not you can, attempting you to do so. You can present your case, and then it would be up to the court to decide that. That's. That's why I brought this up from the beginning, whether or not this is really right for a motion to dismiss before we've had any evidence. So then we've submitted a, a stipulation of facts that both of you told me was, well, you, you know, covered all relevant, it, you know, factual issues that I would need to make a determination, and there wasn't any dispute on the facts. And there's a dispute on a key fact. A key fact is whether or not he had knowledge of, uh, of being recorded. Then, then we have a dispute about whether that matters or not. I got. I, the state's arguing that it doesn't matter whether he knew that if he didn't give permission, then, you know, the statute still is applied. Hold on. You're saying that isn't the case, but I, I can't even get to that issue if I don't know, if I can't make a determination on the facts. I have to have evidence then. I understand. My argument is assuming that what the state says would be found by the court, giving them the benefit of the doubt, which you're required to do, of course, at this stage of the proceedings. First of all, Mr. My, Officer my pleasure knew that his voice would be could be intercepted because he was talking on a phone. That is what the statute talks about: interception, not recording. If you look at the if you look at the language of the statute. Second of all, he had no he had no expectation that he wasn't going to be recorded because there was a third party that had already stated he was going to be recorded. And of course, this only goes to one of the three issues that the court has to decide today. If someone is talking on their cell phone, if Officer Mount Pleasure is talking on his cell phone, and I'm standing a few feet from him, I, I don't think that I have an expectation necessarily that that conversation is going to be overheard by the other person at the other end of that line. It's, it's, to hear what I'm saying, the third party saying over the phone, it's not. I, I don't think that's what intercept means. I get, I understand his argument. But I don't think that means that that officer believes that his conversation is going to be intercepted and by that individual. It would mean that that individual over the noise of traffic on 114 would have to be able to hear what Officer Mount Pleasure was saying to to the operator of the vehicle. So I don't I don't think that Officer Mount Pleasure merely because the defendant was talking on the phone had an expectation that his conversation was going to be intercepted. And that's not what the defendant intended either. Um, he, he was not using the phone in that manner. He was using it to, to tape him. But um, So I, I disagree with the defendant's argument in that case. That even if you take the, so if you take the, the facts as the state presents them, that Officer Montplaisir did not know he was going to be recorded, did not know he was being recorded, um, I disagree with his arguments. Um, And in, a, in the, the, in terms of the First Amendment, Your Honor, yes, a public official definitely has a decreased expectation of privacy in terms of their duties. 
Uh, however, the defendant makes very broad assertions in his motions that the public official has no expectation of privacy. That is clearly not true in, in uh, the everyday business. Uh, for one thing, in order to report in this courtroom, uh, the defendant had to file a motion and get approval for that motion to report. There are all kinds of expectations of privacy in a courtroom. And to make a broad assertion that you can audio and video... Counsel, he's not making a broad assertion. He's just citing case law. Granted, it isn't from this jurisdiction, except for I guess one case from the First Circuit. But he's saying there is no case law except the one case that's provided from New Hampshire, but he's, he's not making a broad assertion, or are you going to be able to make a broad assertion in terms of what your opinion is of what that involves? What authority do you have to say that public official can't be reported? Do you have any authority for that, or are you just saying he hasn't proven his case? I mean, he, he can't prove a negative. There is no authority. There is no authority. Are you are you asserting any, any kind of authority for your claim that this is, this is not permissible? The statute, yeah that there's a statute in place, the definitions of that statute say X, Y, and Z. He's saying that he has case law which says that makes those definitions not apply to a police officer because of their function as a public official. Is there official. any exception to the statute for police officer? Was that directed to me, Your Honor? Uh, no, there's not, Your Honor, but the, uh, the, I'm not making the argument that this doesn't apply to a police officers. I'm, I'm making the argument that the statute should be applied to police officers. The statute says can't intercept oral communication without without um, permission. Oral communication is communication uh, uttered by a person that has a, a subjective expectation that it won't be intercepted, and that expectation is objectively reasonable. I'm not arguing that police officers are exempted. I'm offering. I'm saying that police officers don't have an objectively reasonable expectation that how they perform their public duties in public is a private matter. There's lots of times that police officers perform their duties in public places that it would be a private matter. Um, I'll give you an example, Your Honor. The police department lobby would consider, obviously be considered a public place. Um, in the Ware Police Department, unfortunately, it's a small place. We have an interview room and the well, lobby. Let's deal with the facts of this particular okay. case rather than start substituting yes, right. scenarios. I mean, where police officers out on the street countering a citizen affecting some kind of investigation, I would assume at that point, based upon a stop, what reasonable expectation of privacy should the officer have or need to have in that situation? Why should that be a private matter? For one thing, we have a statute that, I, I'm not, I've just, I've already well, he, said. He, he had, we have a statute, but he's arguing that, that, that it, it, the definition of oral communication requires an interpretation of whether or not there was a reasonable right. expectation of privacy, assuming that that's a correct interpretation of the statute. What's the reasonable expectation of privacy that an officer, a police officer, would have in conducting an investigation on a public highway, the side of a public highway with a citizen? What's, what's there the are many times that you would have an expectation that the officer would need an expectation of privacy in us in interaction with a citizen on any public way. Police officers get stopped routinely um, to ask for help. Uh, you meet somebody in a parking lot that wants to have a conversation with you, you're having a conversation with a citizen. What this is saying, what the argument by the defendant is that in any context where a police officer is meeting on a public way, a public facility, with an individual, that can be recorded. So if a mother comes to an officer and says, I want to report, and it happens to be on a, in a parking lot, I want to report an assault, of, a sexual assault of my children, or a runaway, or that I was just assaulted by my husband, and that that could be taped because the officer has no expectation of privacy in that public place. And that's the concern, that what, what happens then is you take the argument that a police officer has no expectation of privacy and then say, at any point in time... I don't have... Counsel, I, I keep trying to bring you back to the specific facts in this case because I don't need to make a blanket finding one way or the other and shouldn't in this case because it's situational. That's the nature of that kind of determination a court has to make about what's the expectation of privacy in that case. I don't, I don't, 
you keep giving these scenarios other than the scenario that we have. The scenario we have is somebody stops somebody, presumably for some kind of motor vehicle investigation, uh, on a public highway, and engages in, in that investigation. Some communication takes place and it gets recorded. So when you respond to my question, let's, re let's respond yes, to a specific situation, because I have to make the determination of whether that's a law communication under the statute in each situation, not generally. Not currently. Yes, sir. Not, it, 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 not, not for every situation, but for the situation in the case that's before me only. Right? So, what's the expectation of privacy here? Where we all, uh, as opposed to all these other scenarios you're giving me that aren't the scenario, this is the scenario. Yes, sir. In this specific situation, Officer Mount Pleasure believed he had a reasonable expectation of privacy for a couple of reasons. Um, in the past, when we had the audio and video taping in the cruisers, Officer Mount Pleasure was instructed that he had to inform people that they were being audio and video taped on a public <coughs> vehicle stop. And if they refused, the answer would be, you had to turn it off. That's the rule when they had the audio and video. Um, secondly, he believed that he had an expectation of privacy because the the, one of the, the individuals stopped in this matter, Mr. Amon, specifically asked to be recorded and was given permission. When Officer Montplaisir asked the defendant in this matter if he was being recorded, the defendant did not respond that he was recording Officer Montplaisir. All of those gave Officer Montplaisir the belief that he had a reasonable expectation of privacy in 570A, reasonable expectation of privacy in conducting business on the roadside. Not that if asked, he would get permission, but he needed to be notified that he was being audio and video recorded. Uh, sorry, only audio recorded, obviously. Audio recorded at the time of the motor vehicle stop, Your Honor. Your Honor, if I may, that's, that's a statement only to the subjective expectation. And I believe the court's question was about the objective, whether that was objectively reasonable. And I think it is objectively reasonable, Your Honor, based on 570A. I believe that that... You know, you can, I'm sorry. I don't interrupt you, Attorney Hippo. So you make your arguments, and I'll make my arguments. I, I believe that 570A gives an officer a reasonable expectation that, and, and the reason in the attached pleading, the attachment D2, I think it is, Your Honor, D1, the Attorney General says the reason that what happened was the Portsmouth Police Department posted that that was going to be audio and videotaped. So they were given notice that they were being audio and videotaped. That makes a huge difference. Your officers never, that situation I take it though, the officers never gave permission. They were just notified that they never gave their permission to be audio tape, correct? Right? Um, there was a issue with, there was um, there were signs posted in the lobby. There were not signs posted in the back, like in the actual offices. The question is permission. Uh, there was no permission or notification for the back offices, only notification for the front lobby. But even where there was notification, there wasn't permission. That's correct. To record it. That's correct. So that, that that that's one of the issues that we have here. It's, it's going to be an objective determination about under the circumstances whether there was a reasonable expectation of privacy. But I, th I still think there's a dispute in what I'm hearing from the two arguments about whether or not an absolute permission is not only notification but permission as opposed. That's what you seem to be saying. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Dis despite your despite the Attorney General decision, despite the decision in, in the case it's But it's not fatal to this argument, Your Honor, because... Okay, but it may not be, but let's clarify your position for the record. Are you arguing that if permission isn't expressly or implied in, in some implied fashion given, that just notification that you're being recorded is enough? The, the, the Attorney Hippel is saying that, that, that if, you, if you notify if you're notifying them and they therefore have no reasonable expectation of privacy, and I have to make that determination that that, even if permission isn't granted, that isn't wiretapping. But if we're going to stick to the facts of this case, the state would argue the facts of this case were that Officer My Pleasure wasn't even notified. We're arguing no notification at all in this case. Well, oh, you're both making the reason why I won't be able to rule on a motion today then without taking evidence. If you're going to continue to argue that there's a factual dispute about that, then I'll have to hear testimony about that. I can't have just an argument on that. I can't make a ruling on that without taking testimony and having testimony subject to cross-examination. That's not due process. I have, to, I have to be able to do that before I can make a determination because this is now arguments coming down to an essential factual matter which is not stipulated to. The, 
What's in the stipulated facts, Your Honor, um, about the conversation that took place is all the notification that uh, Mr. Uh, that Officer Montplaisir received was that he suspected he might be recorded. He stated, if you are, you'll have to get my permission. Um, Mr. Allman said, no, I won't because you don't have a reasonable expectation of privacy. Officer Montplaisir said, we'll let it be. There was no other notification other than that except for Mr. Ammon's notification. I will note, Your Honor, that um, the prosecutor re, uh, referred to RSA 570A to say that there was, a, there was objective reasonableness in Officer Montplaisir's expectation, but the statute doesn't define objective reasonableness. It simply states that one has to ha that the subjective expectation has to be objectively reasonable. The statute doesn't define it, so I don't believe the state can point to that to say to argue that it was reasonable. Anything else? That's all I have, Your Honor. What what is the state's final position with regard to the First Amendment argument as opposed to the statutory argument? With the First Amendment argument? I I believe that a public official does have a less expectation of privacy than a private citizen in terms of the expectation of privacy is reduced with regards to a public official. I think the case law is clear on that. Um, however, I don't think that, again, countermands 570A, that it, with regards to 570A, you still would have to at least notify the officer that he's being audio recorded, Your Honor. I don't think the same is true. Um, if there is no, if it fail, if there's no, if the cat's test doesn't apply. Notification. She's saying you just have to notify. Regardless of considering all your case law that you've cited, including the First Amendment case law, if the statute would at least require notification, and there's an issue, obviously, I have to decide. That's, not true, That's okay, not true, Your Honor. That's not true. There's two reasons. First of all, the statute only requires notification if the officer has, or the person being recorded has, a reasonable expectation of privacy that society is ready to accept as objectively reasonable. Okay. So that's the only time that you have to that you have to uh, notify. So there's a barrier before the notification requirement um, applies. Secondly, that really doesn't come into the First Amendment arguments for two reasons. One, the First Amendment analysis doesn't really talk about that as much. And second of all, the First Amendment obviously trumps RSA 570A. The First Amendment analysis centers around whether or not the person being recorded or the things being recorded are a matter of public interest subject to the freedom of the press uh, in the First Amendment. And that's the issue there, not the reasonable expectation of privacy. Reasonable ex expectation of privacy comes in whenever we're talking about whether or not there was an intercepting under the, the language of RSA 570A. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. Yep, I understand. Any response? Yeah, I stand my audience, yeah. All right, well, the court will take the matter under advisement, considering the cases that have been submitted as well as the arguments that the court's heard today. One of the first things to decide is whether or not I can even rule on this motion without taking testimonial evidence. If so, I would you know, take up the motion as a motion to dismiss. Um, at some point, you could raise after evidence was submitted in the case. Um, if I think that there's enough evidence before the court that I can rule on that, obviously, then I'll, I'll make a pretrial ruling on the motion to dismiss. The other motion to suppress, for the reason I've already stated, is denied without prejudice, which means you can raise it again when, I, when, it, when it's ripe to be raised at this point. Uh, it isn't for the reasons I stated earlier. Um, is this matter already scheduled for trial? It is. It's scheduled for trial on August 26 at 1 o'clock. I'd rather not get to that day and find out we can't finish it and then have to find a date a month after that. There's enough time between the hearings. If we need more than three hours for that, then we should schedule something now as close to that other date as we can get it, um, even if we don't end up using it, just to be sure. Do you, do you think that... The facts are quick, Your Honor. I don't think it would take more than three hours. To Thankfully, since we covered the legal issues today, I don't think we're going to need more than three hours. No. Um, the defense has as many as two witnesses and 
I have two. Yeah. And it's quick, their testimony is should be. And nobody's going to want to hear the case and then hear it the rest of it a month later. Though. That's, and I don't think if we wait till the 26th to schedule more time, because it turns out we need it, we're not going to be able to schedule it the next week. I don't have a problem with scheduling more time just to be safe. I, I don't have as much confidence as council. The council's attorneys usually don't stick to their term frames anyway. So That's true. I, I think you're going to have to make sure that whatever judge is hearing it on the 26th, um, you have to be again before that person or that person is here again. Maybe just get it for another hour or so just so we have some time. The next day that that particular judge is here is September 9th. Yeah. And I don't know that after, but that day looks like. I would just take it. Um, yeah. 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 Hopefully it won't be necessary, but I'm not totally confident that's the case. Right. Any other matters uh, that we haven't dealt with today that we... No. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right.